The podcast hosts that moisturize together stay together. Stay together. Serving you peppermint ham ball and realness. Jolie serving, are you orange and patchouli? Orange and patchouli body whip vibes. Oh my god. Um, as we moisturize, I'd like to take a moment of silence for our fallen sister. Pat King. <laughs> <laughs> Boom! No. R.I.P. No, baby. From Tuesday, our sister from Victoria, B.C., Jimbo. Um, Julie cried. Okay, I have so much, for, for those of you that are not in the know, we talk about Drag Race a lot sometimes to open the show because that's how Jolie and I catch up on our TV together. Drag Race UK versus the world, which is basically an international version of All Stars right now. And there's been two Canadian reps. There's been Lemon from Toronto, Ontario-ish. And yeah. Jimbo from Victoria, BC. Jimbo has crushed the first two episodes. She oh, was yeah. in the top two both weeks. And maybe overplayed her hand a little bit and said, like, I just want to vote out who's going to beat me. And needless to say, it pissed off all the other girls because they voted for Jimbo to go home. And then in this newest episode, Jimbo did not deserve to go home over Juju. No. And I think uh, that was that was the elimination that gagged the world. And quite honestly, in my mind, I was like, oh, Pangina. She's going to vote she's going to vote to keep Jimbo because Pangina is going to going to play the great game correctly but also she is a Thai queen who needs to know that lessons must be learned. She needs the people to know that actions have consequences. consequences. And uh she voted Jimbo. I would not be surprised if if Janie did as well. I think I think all the queens were pissed at her. Yeah, it, it is such a, it's such a hard thing to, because I was behind Jimbo, and I'm a, I'm behind a queen who's who identifies another queen as a threat and uses the opportunity because like you think that that's how a game show is played, exactly. but in in drag world, especially drag world like All Stars drag world, it it's kind of flipped that whole idea of competition on its head. I, I know I, that's what frustrates me about these all star seasons of drag race where the girls have to vote out each other. They they tend to play the game quite honorably and honestly. And I'm like, yeah, but there's like one hundred thousand dollars at stake. Like I'd be voting out the bitch that was the biggest threat, which in this case was Jimbo. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, like I I hate when they're like, oh, I can't vote this girl to go home. She was sickening this week. But yeah, she's sickening because she might take you out later. Like it's. And I just, I don't think Jumbo deserved, I mean, okay, I guess I'm, I guess I'm agreeing with Pangina. Like if I were in Pangina's shoes, maybe I would vote on Jimbo because Jimbo is a threat. And like you said, I think she in a way kind of gave Jimbo some comeuppance. Mm -hmm. But as a viewer, I'm gutted. (laughs) And as a Canadian, I'm gutted. Yes. As a viewer and a Canadian, I'm shocked. I'm Um, gagged. Yeah. I, I guess it makes sense. Like, that's how I would play the game, but also, like, I'm just... Jimbo was extremely entertaining in the first two episodes. Oh, yes, and isn't it just so uh, convenient as well that um, that Jimbo did this to somebody last week, and Pangina wins this week, and Jimbo lands in the bottom. This is the best excuse to disguise the taking out of your biggest competition. Yeah, Pangina's smart. I... Because no one will fault her for that. No, I think I think all I bet you when, when they walk back into the workroom next week, they're they're all going to agree with Pangina. They're like, oh yeah, she had to go. It's like you're you're all threatened by Jimbo. Like that's, you know, Pangina included. Even though I think honestly, Pangina might be better than Jimbo, mm-hmm. but Jimbo is still a threat. Yeah, there's like a polishedness. Y- oh. You know when they always say, um, oh, they're saying to Carrie Colby, you need to let go a little bit. You need to show, uh, you need to show the world how stupid you can be and be perfect pinchina is like the perfect combination of like um lady boy like like and i'm saying this from like the thai Hi. culture yep. like the lady boy pageants kind of indoctrinate uh an ethic a perfectionist ethic in people oh, so that when it, 
when it comes to things like drag or really anything that Thai people do, they are perfectionists. But it's so awesome that like because there is a gay culture that's celebrated, you're allowed to be stupid as well. Like, you, um, and Pinjana is a very good, stupid perfectionist sort of like. She, I, yeah, she can do it all. She can do camp. She can do editorial. Mm -hmm. She can do. I don't know if she can do comedy yet. Kind of. Camp's kind of comedy, but we'll see if she can do like comedy, comedy next week's yeah. Snatch Game. Um, so I, I, she's, man, I, I, I remember saying, I think in the first episode, I obviously wanted the Canadian queen to win. Now those dreams mm -hmm. are dashed. But my second <laughs> choice was Pangina because I, I, I was a big fan of Pangina even before this season started. Yeah. So. Oh, I, I'm very, there's a lot of emotions from Tuesday. It was a lot. <laughs> yeah, it's, I'm so of two minds because uh, I like it. And personally, I call her Nassau Jujube because Jujube is Laotian and Pangina oh. is Thai. I am half Lao, half Thai. I, so, I, I didn't know this. Yeah. Well, while I want a Canadian queen to win, I also am like not heartbroken that my uh, two cultural representatives are still in the running. <laughs> yes, Jujubee still in the running, and yeah, I, I feel bad. Like I like Jujubee, I just don't think she's bringing it. No, <laughs> it's so stupid too. Because like in the first season of All Stars that she was in, or maybe the second, I feel like she brought it way harder than this. Yeah, so I don't, I I mean, I guess we'll find out the tea. You know, the gays, they love to talk. We'll find it out later. Yeah, but, we'll find out. Maybe uh, she blew her load on that, uh, that, that Queen of the Universe show. I don't know. She was just, like, she's been in so much drag. Like, give me a, anyways. Mm -hmm. Anyways, welcome to the Full Volume Podcast. I am your host, Harvey Brent, joined by our reigning COVID queen, yeah, and I mean, the two-time champion of the world, currently reigning, um, right? Um, currently reigning as in, yeah, girl, <laughs> she got it again. Uh, geez, geez, Louise. Oh my <laughs> I work God, in retail, so folks. This is the worst. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Stay safe, bitches. Get your booster, because honestly, um, get your vaccine. Uh, I think there's one thing that I know for certain, and that's if I was not vaccinated, if I had not been boosted, I would be in a hospital, goddammit. You might be, yeah. I, <laughs> lucky that we had the option to get vaccinated, because... Oh, yeah. Oh, and the other thing, too, is, do you know what? I might not be uh, so fortunate to get into a hospital, because uh, I think our I think our hospital is still over, a little overwhelmed. I would not be surprised. I don't, I don't know the situation <sighs> yeah. over here, but, yeah. oh, boy. Um, but so, yeah. you're here regardless, and you you mm -hmm. through. So, um, yeah, you're getting props from Indiana, Arkansas, giving you kudos. Berlin, Missouri, <laughs> Berlin. <laughs> Deutschland says she's a trooper. Yeah, ich spreche ein bisschen Deutsch. Oh, I can see she's that. learning. That's right. You're learning yeah. the terms. Right? <laughs> Today was my 102 day streak on Duolingo. Yes, Mama. Ich spreche Deutsch. That was terrible. I'm sorry. The pronunciation is very Canadian of me. <laughs> <laughs> but here I am learning that my cat sometimes plays basketball. That's an actual sentence that I'm asked to translate in my German study. <laughs> I think it's relevant in your household. So. I think Duolingo has a little bit of an algorithm going on. <laughs> it knows. It knows. So, okay. Now that we've gotten the drag race out of our systems, oh, I've been, right, you know, now that I've had, had this extra time to, like, sleep and watch extra TV, I watched this episode twice of Peacemaker. Mm. Uh, episode, ooh, the season, the season finale. Episode Power eight. Power Oh, girl, coward. Okay, when I saw... The, I always... I like to open my app before I cast it to the TV. And I love seeing the name of the episode. This one made me chuckle a little bit. Do you want to do the recap today? Uh, oh, my God. Well, we I'll yeah, do my I best. I mean, we can take turns. Oh, uh, you just jump in if I miss anything. Okay, okay. Uh, I don't have names in front of me, so I'm going to do my best. 
So basically, at this point now, we know that the the uh, police station has, you know, they're all infected with butterflies. They're on their way to transport the cow from the ranch because the cow is their only source of food and they're trying to preserve it. So they are feverishly working on a teleporter to transport this, this space cow to safety to an undisclosed location. Meanwhile, Peacemaker et al. are driving to said location and Adebayo is trying to profusely apologize to Peacemaker for planning the diary on him, launching this massive manhunt against Peacemaker. Peacemaker is just responding with fart noises, joined in by his, his quasi-on-the-spectrum best buddy, Vigilante. Quasi? <laughs> Fully. <laughs> Fully. And <clears throat> so there's, a lot of, there's a lot of regret there by Adebayo. But Peacemaker and all of them arrive at the ranch, and they... They bring out all of Peacemaker's helmets and they devise a plan, a plan to sonic boom the area and blow up the teleporters so that they can't transport the cow. Genius, except so many things go wrong. <laughs> Just literally so many things go wrong. Like, I, I think there was probably like at least 15 minutes of like detours for them. <laughs> 15 <laughs> minutes of screen time of them like, oh, crap, we did this. Oh, fuck, we did this. You know, they accidentally activated the anti-gravity helmet that flies away into the woods. They have to run off and get the... <laughs> get the anti-gravity helmet and you know they they end up you know sending in economos undercover and they have him try and plant a bag down into the uh the barn of the the, the ranch the there cow barn. the cow barn thank you coverdale ranch coverdale ranch thank you <laughs> plotting planting this this sonic boom helmet with a walkie-talkie inside in order to to use a voice activation just so many things going wrong so many so many almost so much almost getting caught um uh, constant bickering between the team just constantly nattering uh, you know vigilante saying how you know people should really voice how they understand sar uh, that they're about to do sarcasm before they actually say it it's just i i love this group dy dynamic anyways i i digress <laughs> i'm gonna try and like get a recap out and then we'll talk about it but <laughs> at this point economos is found out and so he's running for his life and that's when adebayo finally successfully voice activates the sonic boom helmet and it she does it three or four times which severely damages the infrastructure and the teleporter of the of the space cow in coverdale ranch's barn so they've actually made progress and that's when peacemaker and and harcourt and vigilante go in with guns a taking out as many people as they can, as many butterflies as they can. I should, should correct myself there. And mm -hmm. peace, uh, Peacemaker goes down, down, down into the barn of Coverdale Ranch to finish the job while Vigilante and Harcourt cover him outside and, and buy him time by, you know, fighting the remaining butterflies. <clears throat> Peacemaker gets into some, some trouble down there where Adebayo has to save him. And finally, Peacemaker comes face to face with uh, Goff, the butterfly goth who is inside i i can't remember her name now she's the female detective song detective yes song, song. yeah detective song or and, as uh oh, no i'm not even gonna repeat it because i said the white dragon calls her oh god captain chopsticks what an Somebody asshole called her what a dick <laughs> he so many things he sucks uh and so anyways peacemaker comes face to face with a goth infested detective song and she explains her plight of why the butterflies are on Earth, which is basically they're there to preserve Earth because Earth is the only other inhabitable planet such as theirs. Their planet is dying. They're trying to preserve Earth. And so they've infected all these world leaders to pass, I, su I assume, left-leaning policies that preserve the Earth and prevent climate change. And at that point, as a view, sorry, I'm getting off topic again. Peacemaker doesn't fall for it. <laughs> Peacemaker does not fall for it and shoots Detective Song. She's downed. Goff escapes. And as, as the last-ditch effort to destroy the pig, he sends... Or pig. Cow. Sorry, getting my, <laughs> getting my livestock confused. As a last-ditch effort to save or destroy the cow, he sends Adebayo in with a torpedo helmet on to puncture a hole through the cow, assumingly to kill it. And then everybody goes to the hospital and bandaged up, but not before the Avengers or whoa, <laughs> before the Justice League. I know that's a big whoop, uh, before the Justice League arrives in a little cameo appearance and Peacemaker gets to flip them off and, you know, accost them as one does. Call them names. <laughs> Call them names. 
and then we have you know the end sequence of of you know peacemaker sitting on his trailer having Thor to the butterfly plan goth is there drinking some nectar with visions of his father and eagerly dropping you know a little a little present for himself to munch on and that's the season yay that's um it. there's so many things that happen in this episode <coughs> not uh th- that least of all uh, oh geez <clears throat> Um, this is probably, this is probably the best episode of the series. He, I, yeah, I, I, I had me laughing quite a bit. Like the, the bickering between everybody was on point this week. Oh yes. And they say never to skip the credits. Like it's a meme to now never skip the credits, but, uh, to, to credit somebody that I wrote on, that I read on Reddit slash don't remember your username i'm so sorry every time you watch the credits after the cold open it hits differently and this time it hits differently it's so hard to watch uh their friendship deteriorate based on the things that happened uh or transpired like adebayo totally regrets planting the diary Mm -hmm. um but also to watch peacemaker kind of like give it to her for doing so it's like you didn't have to do it but you're an asshole like we were friends but you're an asshole (laughs) totally yeah and then vigilante's just being a you know vigilante his first best friend sweet foolish innocent self yeah just you know hating just like a good girlfriend would hating Uh, this person as much as peacemaker needs him to hate her (laughs) yeah (laughs) definitely i can see that um declaring that adab uh that peacemaker his first best friend eagly his second best friend and adabio his fifth best friend (laughs) that he will not doesn't trust her either it's it's sort of cute it's like a little it's like a little tiff that you know is going to it's not going to go anywhere they're going to make up yeah, and it's, but it shows, like, Vigilante's childlike innocence. Yeah. For sure. <laughs> Super childlike. It is. It's totally childlike. Oh, <laughs> uh, okay. Okay, so, that car ride, super cute, super fun. Uh, then they finally get there. And then, like, another great uh, sort of show of force uh economos is mm, what's the word for he's like deactivated they like essentially break he breaks his leg moving into the fray i died at that scene i it was so funny (laughs) (laughs) it was such a pathetic fence to fall over and it just it's such a like huge compound fracture of his shin bone like sticking out yeah (laughs) It was funny. That's later on in the episode, though. That was, like, when uh, they went to go save Hardcore and Vigilante from being shot. Oh, yes, that's right. That's later on. But, yes. I Yeah. So, I would say that there was... Uh, I have to defend my position that this is the one of the best episodes of the season. And I'll say that because I feel like the character development has come to a head. And there's still more. You know, there's still tons of it. Um, because now they're developing as a group in their little group dynamic, and they're showing us more of that. Um, also, we get a little bit more about these butterflies, the goth butterfly again. Maybe a little neoliberal libertarian, but <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't call him totally liberal. I mean, he's still trying to kill, still trying to commit genocide for the for the good of the planet. <laughs> I I don't know anymore. <laughs> right. <laughs> This, uh, just in case anyone doesn't know, uh, we have to play this against the very real life thing happening in Ottawa. So uh, the only thing we can compare this to is that. And even saying things like Ottawa and Convoy in this podcast will get a shadow banned from, <laughs> yeah, from YouTube. So whoops. Um, we're gonna say them because now we just don't give a shit. Uh, so yeah, the, the this is like the upside down. Um, everything is the upside down. And this is what we have to compare it to. So let's see. Just coming back and backing away from that big the biggest tangent. Okay. The action. The action and the character development is really well interspersed and kind of like equally divided 
along the plot lines of the episode. Mm -hmm. Mm, And the action is crazy. The action's crazy. The, in the set piece though, I could totally tell they were filming in Vancouver. Yeah. I could totally tell by the, by the trees, which, you know, as a scientist, I hate when movies ruin that for me, but. Oh no. (laughs) I know I've gotten good with my trees lately. So I could totally tell that was a forest somewhere on the outskirts of Vancouver in BC. But the, the set pieces were really good. The only one that um, kind of bothered me was when Peacemaker went into the barn and then, like, you know, like he fell through the stairs and then was, like, covered in rubble. That was extremely poorly lit to the point where I'm like, I have no idea what's going on. Yeah. That was that was badly blocked out. That's part of... Is that a set piece? Is that the term? Yeah, I would say set. A set, yeah. 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 I... <sighs> Game of Thrones did it to me. Walking oh. Dead did it to me. Don't don't get me started on that Game of Thrones burial of Cersei and Jamie. Don't get me. Do not get me started. What burial? I saw nothing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> um. Oh, but yeah. Ooh. Okay. The, so the lighting is giving me Walking Dead all of season Negan vibes. Oh yeah. Um, because did you see anything? No, good. Neither did I. Um, yeah, I didn't like that point. But no. the, rest, the rest of the steps, you know, it's good. And the, like you said, the action was great. Yeah. It was, you know, well blocked out and it was violent and brutal and, uh, reciprocal because Harcourt and Vigilante also got beat up quite a bit. They didn't get like a faux superhero show of force where they beat everybody up. They actually got their ass handed to them too. Oh God. Uh, because they they rush they all rush in there, uh, and the title theme song is playing underneath them as they walk towards the action, and then the action is high and it's hitting, and the co- fight choreography is amazing, and the the cameras follow the fight choreography, and it's amazing, and it actually made sense to have music playing this time. <laughs> yeah. Uh... <laughs> We finally get the answer to the question, the Big Wom's question, do you want to taste it? And the answer is, we do. Please. We have been tasting it for weeks, and now we can really taste it. Mm-hmm. Totally. <laughs> uh, um, and yeah, like you said, Harcourt and Vigilante, they, they get a real good taste because they get knocked right down. As in, like, they get shot up and we see them fall. Yep. Uh, but like most superheroes, they get, they don't, well, they don't get up. They get up later, much, much later after most of the action has passed. And I thought, I thought that the plot devices of his helmets, um, I thought introducing a lot of them wouldn't do uh, introducing them at the start of the episode where it's like, Oh, his dad made all these helmets for him. It's like, Mm -hmm. but when would you need all these helmets? And why would like, how would you carry each one of them around? And why wouldn't you engineer a helmet that did all of those things at once? And um, I thought, I was like, is this going to do a lot of heavy lifting until we need them for what they need to be done? And they didn't thank God. But uh, however, it, it did end up that we needed more than one in the end. Uh, mm-hmm. To create the destruction needed to get rid of the big cow. I just thought it was hilarious that <coughs> they they happened to have exactly the helmets that they needed. The anti-gravity helmet to help him fly. <laughs> that one flew away. Then they lose <laughs> it. Because if you say the words activate gravity helmet beside the helmet. And literally anyone can say it. The helmet just flies away. <laughs> so good. And then I guess he eagerly took the other helmet and they thought he could put it on top of the barn and he just dropped it in the middle of the forest. Yep. Iconic. <laughs> Iconic. <laughs> eagerly is so good. Mm-hmm. Uh, speaking of uh, things that eagerly does, that... Uh, sorry, Adebayo says, I don't know, I saw, I saw an eagle hug a man, and to me it was a sign, and Harcourt goes, it was, so it was a sign for you to stay? How come it wasn't a sign for you to run the other way? And I actually didn't think about it that way at first. (laughs) Because, to me, I guess, I'm an, I'm an Adebayo, (laughs) I am a, 
I'm an empath. If I saw an eagle hug a man, I too would believe in hope. Yeah. <laughs> it would not even dawn on me that it is a sign of weirdness to come. Yeah, like get out of Dodge. <laughs> what does my mother sign me up for? Oh my gosh. Oh, speaking of mothers, uh, Adebayo tells the rest of the group and the world. Uh, so th- the way that they wrap this up is once w- once the butterflies are sort of taken out, um, or the cow, I should say, once the cow is taken out of the equation, um, Adebayo goes on TV and yes. outs Task Ex- Force X. Poses. <laughs> No, what's the acronym though? It, it wasn't X. Ar- Argus. Argus. That was it. Yeah, I was gonna yes. say Angus, like like steak, but no, it's Argus. <laughs> but I mean, it would be right up James Gunn's alley if the acronym was Angus. It would be. It'd be mm-hmm. very James Gunn. Yeah, they should have rewrote that. Anyway, oh, oh they should have rewrote that. So she outs them on live television nationally slash going to be internationally. It cuts to Amanda Waller, who is. Peeved. She, she, I think she says, "What the fuck?" Yeah. Love, love her lipstick color, by the way. That bright pink. Mm-hmm. I can't carry a bright pink. Viola Davis, just a testament to the woman can do anything. You know, I've been, I've been watching a lot of Euphoria lately. Do you know the TV show? You. <laughs> oh yes. The makeup on that show is wild, and that reminds me of it. And not I like hate. Maddie. Oh yeah, I hate Maddie so much. I'm not caught but... up yet. Don't but quit. her eyeliner oh. can cut a bitch. <laughs> oh, yeah. And so, same with uh, Jules. Jules always has, like, gorgeous... But it reminds me of that. It's these very, like, punchy colors that have come back, I think. Oh, yeah. That, that very... The pink. That... Yeah. Very graphic, very editorial. Yeah. Yeah. That just... Uh, it reminded me with, with Viola Davis. And also, too, like... Now I get on another, another rant, but, like, Euphoria is another TV show that expertly uses music like a very 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 good soundtrack so does uh peacemaker of course Mm -hmm. can't get into it like on a walk i can't really listen to the peacemaker soundtrack it's too much for me but i mean it's just that's like my like realm of of reference right now is just like good freaking soundtracks and like i was actually like again i wouldn't listen to this stuff you know while i'm like taking the dog for a walk or anything but like he ha- James Gunn has a, a rule book and he does not stray from that rule book when it comes to his soundtrack. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And like, again, I, I really do caution anyone from listening to this soundtrack um, while you're working out. You're going to. You're going to pull it's a gonna, muscle, bro. It's, it's going to end and your dick's going to be out and it's going to be weird for everybody. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to be a little. <laughs> just, just. Put it away, just, boys. Yeah, just uh, it 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 has the power to do that, I believe. Yeah. Um, I've been, I I fell down a little wigwam hole the other day, and oh, wouldn't you know, mine was outside of my pants too. <laughs> too much metal for Jolie. <laughs> too much, and like my hair had grown like five inches. It was <sighs> nuts. It was nuts. Um, what did you think of? Okay, let's talk about the cameo here from the Justice League. Mm. Did you notice we didn't see Superman or Wonder Woman's faces at all? Yes. I don't know if that was Gal Gadot and Henry Cavill. No, it was supposed to be. Yes, of course. Obviously. I I don't think it was them, actually. I think the lighting was purposely uh, covering their facial features. Oh, yeah. Um, Also, Gal Gadot is taller than the woman that they had standing in for her. So do you think, like, logistically, they filmed this in B.C. Do you think Jason Momoa and Ezra Miller were already in Canada? Or do you think they filmed that scene in the States and still could not get Henry Cavill and Gal Gadot? Because I'm like, how did they they do that? Like, they filmed this during COVID when things were a pain in the ass last year. Yeah. How do they do this? I feel like they might have filled them separately and pieced it all together. They must have. Yeah, I don't feel like... Uh, as much as it was, I don't feel like the interaction between Ezra Miller and Jason Momoa was organic enough that they were interacting with each other. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. Um, but they may have been interacting with somebody who was delivering the line to the other person. Who knows? Uh, 
they could have very well been in a studio in California doing it. For sure, I know that Henry Cavill's been in England. Yeah, so I feel like he wouldn't, especially last year. I mean, well, the U.S. was kind of open way before us because <laughs> they don't care. But I, ah. I feel like he wouldn't have made a trip for that quick of a cameo. No. Unless he was contractually obligated to do so, but I doubt he was. No, exactly. And mm. I feel like of the four of them, uh, Ezra Miller and Jason Momoa are like, yeah, let's do it. <laughs> yeah, maybe you're right. Yeah. I mean, Henry Cavill other... and Gal Gadot sh- for sure could be those types of people, but like maybe they're busy. Yeah, I was going to say maybe they're overcommitted for something like that. So. Yeah, and they also live internationally. Who knows where they are at this point? Where does Gal Gadot live? I thought she lived in LA or California. Mm. I think that she lives. I mean, for the most part, I thought she lived overseas. That's totally possible. I believe she is from Israel. Yes. Uh, let's see. Let's check her. Let's see where she is from. Or living, at least. Because I know at the start of the pandemic, she had been does any, at Does home. anybody want to dox Gal Gadot for us? <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Don't do that. <laughs> don't do that. Please don't no, do it that. Looks like, it looks like they're probably busy. She's definitely busy on a beach somewhere. Are you on her Instagram? Um, yeah, it looks like she's been doing a lot of shoots. Yeah, see, but, I don't think that was her. No, no, it definitely wasn't her. No, but I, it yeah. was a fun little cameo to tie together, you know, the Justice League, which I was not expecting, to be honest. I was a little surprised that it happened. <clears throat> yeah. So a lot of people, um, well... He, James Gunn did an interview that was released maybe a couple weeks ago where he said he adamantly uh, refused to release all eight episodes to HBO because he didn't want the end spoiled. Oh. He didn't want the eighth episode specifically to be spoiled on because the internet. Of the cameo, I'm guessing. Yeah, I'm assuming it's because of the cameo. But also, um, again, now we have to like speculate about world building, but also because what this means about the Suicide Squad. Um, because everyone's banking on a Suicide Squad franchise. So mm-hmm. having outed, having Adebayo have outed the Suicide Squad missions. Yep. What does that mean for the Suicide Squad? Personally, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, what's her face? Um, Margot Robbie, Robbie, Robbie said that she, Margot Robbie said potato, that she, potato. Doesn't, she, she doesn't think she's going to be reprising Harley Quinn for a while yet. Yeah. But I mean, maybe that's just studio speak. But she said, I think she it's going to be a long time before she plays Harley Quinn again. Yeah. Which is totally fine. Uh, people are allowed to do what they want. They're allowed to take breaks. Except Tom Holland. Give us Spider-Man 4 yesterday. Yeah, please. Um, we waited long enough. <laughs> we waited six weeks since No Way Home. <laughs> six weeks is long enough, Tom. <laughs> Give us Spider-Man 4. <laughs> But <laughs> no, that's like, I, I don't know. I don't know where they're going to go with this. I'm again, I'm not prescient enough with the DC. Is it DCEU extended universe? Is it? Yeah. Deku. I don't know. How you pronounce it. DC. Unfortunately. Yeah. Is it Deku? DCEU. DCEU. Okay. I don't, I don't know enough about it and the, the workings behind the scenes to think about where it's going to go. Are we getting a justice league? I hope not. Does, does anybody want that? No, I mean, we're still coming off the high of that four-hour Snyder cut, so let's mm. settle down, folks. No one cares about the Justice League. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I mean, just, I I think I saw it once. Just give us a bunch of these Z-list characters and good writing again. I think Peacemaker is honestly my favorite DCEU property so far. Yeah. I, I, and I hate to, I don't hate to say it. I love to say it. Peacemaker is my favorite now. My second favorite being Superman and Lois. The TV show that's she happening, went right? Now. Deep. <laughs> <laughs> she went into the CW, folks. <clears throat> is it CW? No. Yeah, yeah. Oh, excuse CW. me. Yeah, it's it's the CW. That's That's who's doing that show. I love, I love seeing Clark Kent as... 
as like a family man, I love seeing his boys. I don't really like the Lois, but no one ever likes Lois. <sighs> Whatever. No one's ever going to stop complaining about the Lois. Um, I hear Titans is also good. You would know better than I. I don't keep yeah. up with the DC. I will there say, are... though, I was mm. going to say, I think Peacemaker is, like, I did not like him too much in the Suicide Squad film. Mm-mm. But I, I think he might be my favorite Suicide Squad, Suicide, Suicide Squad, Suicide Squad member now, I think. Yeah. He really kind of, him and Denzel, was it Denzel? In the movie? Oh, no, uh, Idris. Oh, my goodness. Sorry. Him and Denzel Washington. I see baby Idris. Come on. Him and Idris Elba really stole the show. Yeah, totally. And a little bit of Pete Davidson. Oh, my I God. Didn't... I forgot he was in that. <laughs> God. <laughs> Who did he play? Um, the otter human. What's it called? Human rat boy. Oh, my God. <laughs> rat boy. I don't know. But he, it's uh, so dumb. Uh. So, I mean, there's a lot of a lot of things lined up. And if the comics are any indication, and if this show is any indication, it's it's the Z-list things, the Z-list titles, the Z-list characters that are going to be the best, the, the most well-cultivated and the best harvested properties. Mm-hmm. C- upcoming, I hear, is uh, Gotham Central which is a police procedural comic revolving around Gotham PD. Wow. Right? Give me that. I I love CSI. Give me CSI in Gotham City. Give it to you. Right? That's all you got to do. And that's that's all James Gunn has done. He's given you uh, everything we love, sci-fi, and put superheroes into it or put our favorite comic book properties into them he's not reinventing the wheel because you ain't got to reinvent the wheel you ain't got to reinvent the wheel no <laughs> but you do however have to try coffee enemas <laughs> <laughs> yikes um <laughs> any any clothing closing thoughts on on the season finale of peacemaker <clears throat> um it's gonna be a lot uh, it's gonna be a long time until we get anything better than what just happened i don't feel like moon knight's gonna blow us away you don't think so i feel like it will but i'm saying that it won't so that i'm pleasantly surprised that is on the 30th of march Mm -hmm. which means we are almost a full month and a half away so just for our faithful listeners out there so you know what's going on. We are going to do a bunch of your favorite activities, including our beloved tier lists. Maybe a couple of those. We might take a break. Um, I'm currently opening a comic book store that I have to move into in the next month and that I have a bunch of projects. And it's all happening within the next two weeks. So maybe we'll take a couple breaks, too. <laughs> Who knows? Uh- that's up to you, my friend. Yeah. <clears throat> we might so, be doing a live episode in person together. Because oh, we, we live quite far away. But yes. there mm-hmm. might be an opportunity coming up for that. Yeah, so stay tuned for that. Hi. Also, let us know what you think of the season finale of Peacemaker. Did you like it? Did you hate it? What was your favorite part? Do you wish you had an owly? Uh, owly. What happens when you owly? Owly. Eagly. <laughs> I was going to say, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> it's the COVID bug. Yeah. Uh, what happens when you rattle a bag of chips? <laughs> or just a, ra- a regular bag. I know my cat comes running. Um, she doesn't think I have chips, though. Uh, send us, drop us a line at fullvolumepod at gmail.com. You can check out all of these, all of our podcasts, wherever you're listening right now. Uh, just hit back and you'll go to the last episode. Um, or you can go to com- www.comicbooksyndicate.com to listen to this podcast and all of our other great podcasts. We just started a really fun podcast about the Orville called Morville Orville, starring... Everyone's favorite bartender, Ian Phillips. Phillips, Phillips, Yay. Phillips. Yeah. Um, so check that out. We're currently 
into season two, uh, going into season three. So I just found out Orville is on my Disney Plus. I famously have a very bad Disney Plus because I share with Americans and the translation between VPNs gives my Disney Plus terrible content. Not like regular Canadian Disney Plus is like you have. So, but I do have the Orville and I'm very excited. So I, I plan to watch that. I, I do like that show. It's a good show. So I'm like, I'll check out Morville Orville. It's, it's straight into the point. We don't recap Drag Race, which I think is a fault, but. It, it's a little bit of a fault. Yeah. No, I mean like on the other one. You know, yeah. <laughs> I mean, oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> I dare you guys. No, I'm kidding. Um, but that's so it stars Ian. It also stars Mike Al from the Comic Book Syndicate. I think you're selling yourself short, Miss Thing. And me. Yeah. I am also <laughs> on the the Orville podcast. Like, why didn't you tell people that? That is the question. I, <laughs> I thought it was like obvious. No. But no, I guess it wouldn't be. Not. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a video podcast either. So, uh, I mean, you don't have to watch this one. Um, you just get to see the enormous bags under my eyes. Um, but you can listen. You can listen uh, on Spotify or not. <laughs> you can listen on the Joe Rogan experience. <laughs> <Sorry. laughs> um, uh, you can listen on Rhymes with Shopify. Apple iTunes, po- Apple Podcasts, iHeartRadio, um, wherever you listen to podcasts, just search the Full Volume Podcast or the Comic Book Syndicate Network. It will pop right up. Until next time, mm-hmm. keep it loud. I, I keep it at full volume. This has been Harvey Brett. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Okay. <clears throat> Until next time, this is G.I. Joe Lee. And this has been Harvey Brett. Keep it loud. Keep it at full volume. Bye. Bye.